after I fire your clay pieces, they become bisque And now it is time to glaze. And I want to teach you the best way to glaze any project that came out of the kiln. It's already been fired. Hello, my talented artists. to glaze. Now the colors that you see that are wet aren't exactly the colors that they're going to turn out. Before glazes get fired, they are lighter colored and pastel -y and kind of chalky looking. After they get fired, they become brighter and shinier. When we glaze in the art room, we are sharing glazes and we are sharing brushes. All of the pink brushes stay in pink. So you use the brush and when it's done, you don't put it and you want green, don't put it into green. It stays in pink and you use the green brush. But let's say there's no brushes. You might have to wait and say, hmm, well, maybe I'll use red. Once the green brush becomes available, then you can use it. Before you glaze, you should always wipe down your bisqueware, and then you're ready to apply the glaze. There are a few goals. One is to make sure that you are covering all of the clay, except you don't want to glaze the part that touches the table. Now, you can always wash that off at the end, but make sure that you do not glaze the bottom. You can glaze anything that doesn't touch the table. You'll notice that glaze dries pretty fast. Take your time and paint your whole project, your whole piece, and then go back because you need two to three layers of glaze for it to come out of the kiln in the glaze fire and look like it's been coated thoroughly. I have a tip for you. See, I'm done with pink, so now I'm going to use the red brush, pick up red. My tip for you is that paint the large areas first. So I'm going to paint my large areas first with a big brush. And then you can add details on top. When you're using low fire glazes, like we do usually in elementary school, the glaze does not usually drip or move too much when it reaches those high temperatures in the kiln. So you can paint big areas first and then add details on top, and that makes it a little easier. Another important thing is to look all around. Now, if you notice, there's a part that I missed. So if I want that part to be red, I gotta make sure that I do two to three layers of red. So I want you to stand up, move it around, look all around, but always keep your piece over your messy paper and really it's better to try to keep it sitting on your table. You can move it around a little bit to see. I told you that you can't paint the bottom because that will stick to the shelves in the kiln. However, you should paint the underside that does not touch the table. So I'm, I put my red brush back because I'm not using red anymore and I'm switching to blue and I'm gonna use my blue brush. When you are glazing, you're gonna notice that as you apply the glaze with your paintbrush, there will be areas that will not get covered because you might have some dips or divots in, your, in the walls of your structure, your sculpture or your vessel. You have to get a big 
blob of paint? Let's not call it paint, let's call it glaze. Maybe not that much, let it drip a little off. And smoosh it in those areas. It's not like painting a picture with watercolor or tempera paint. We are covering our pieces with glaze and we wanna make sure we get all the areas. With two to three layers of glaze, then it will really look finished. I'm lifting it up, but I told you I want it to be on the table. So you heard that little click, that could be breakage. We don't want it to break. So I'm seeing some spots that I have not gotten. When you think you're done with an area, I want you to get real low, get off your chair, and just turn your piece on the paper and look for any spots that you may have missed. We want to cover everything except the part that touches the table. So we have to look from different angles to make sure that we've covered all the white spots. After we glaze it, I fire it again, and then it has a shiny coat of glass. That's what glaze is. It's a shiny coat of glass. Let's get glazing. 